So in a previous video, I had discussed about comparing a PC to a console price of $500. But what about just getting the PC itself to function essentially just like a console? Well, hey, this is Leo from TechLinePCs.com, and this is an idea that I had when it came to taking a PC that I had built recently at that $500 price point, and then attempting to install, run and play games using the Steam operating system or Steam OS. Now, for those that might be unaware, Steam OS is a decade old operating system that is now in its third iteration. Uh, it originally came out over a decade ago to use with the original Steam machines, which were a Linux based PC. PC that was kind of advertised somewhat as a console alternative, but with PC compatibility in mind. The current Steam OS is the version that's now used in the wildly successful Steam Deck that Valve had released with quite a bit of fanfare in early 2022. Now with this install, I'm actually going into it 100% blind, uh, no guides, no research or how-to videos or anything. Uh, simply put, I went into the Steam OS website and attempted to follow the very same instructions that they have on that exact web page. Now, so far, when I looked over at the page itself, all the requirements look pretty good. Uh, the PC that I'm utilizing here is going to be running a Ryzen 2600, and it's going to be running an NVIDIA GTX 1660 Super with a one terabyte solid state drive, and also 16 gigs of RAM. This is a PC that I've used in my previous video, which I've shown over here, is 100% working completely fine, and is completely compatible with essentially anything that you can run on Steam. According to their own page, uh, they have a specific link for a recovery of the Steam Deck, and that's a different link to download the Steam OS itself. Uh, the instructions seem pretty simple enough from what I could tell. It says just extract the downloaded zip to a flash drive, boot off that flash drive, and voila, it starts the install. Then I just simply copied the files over onto the flash drive itself and attempted to do exactly as instructed right from the Steam website. Just try and boot off of the flash drive itself. Except that didn't work. Every single attempt that I did to see if it could just boot off the flash drive just wouldn't function at all. It would just tell me it's not a viable boot drive, even though I made sure that there's a master boot on the USB drive itself according to disk partition. So I'm like, all right, this is kind of a problem. Now, looking at the file itself, it appears to be an image file. So I tried to see if I could just mount it like a CD onto my own computer and then copy and paste the files from that image onto the flash drive so that way it could act like a CD, if you will. However, when I tried to do this, it would tell me that the file is corrupted. Uh, well, that's not very good. So I tried downloading it three more times just to see if it really was just a corrupted download of some sort, and that didn't seem to be the case. Every single time I downloaded it was the same exact error. So after two hours of this, and my camera finally died on me, I decided that I was just gonna let my camera recharge and actually do a bit of research to see how I can get it installed from there. Now, when Googling how to install Steam OS, every single bit of instructions that I would jump onto and find within not only Google, but over on the YouTube space, would actually bring up other operating systems entirely that happen to just launch as Steam OS. Uh, the one that I managed to stumble onto first when I was going through this was Halo ISO, which came up on multiple different surges. So uh, personal thank you to ETA Prime for recommending it right on their own channel. I'll leave a link to that video here in the description below. Now I did read through their entire page and I did note that they did warn against using NVIDIA GPUs, which personally I do find to be very strange considering that NVIDIA graphic cards do make up about 76% of the Steam user install base. So I went ahead and downloaded the Halo ISO, followed the instructions that were over on the site, slapped it onto the drive using Etcher, and from there, within a few moments, we had a bootable drive that I was able to just plug into the computer and start running it, much to my excitement. And then my excitement then stopped hard stop because anytime I tried to install it from that point, I kept getting U event errors and I could not get past the screen no matter what I tried. I tried formatting the drive again, reinstalling it, trying it over and over again, uh, eventually Googling it. And again, I'm finding that it's just apparently some GPU error for Linux users. I'm not that experienced in Linux. I'm not sure if every error code that exists out there, but if you might know about it, comment in the section below. But at this point, I'm like, all right, this should have been a red flag from all these kinds of things that I'm doing over here. 
So I decided to go look for another installation, and that's when I also ended up stumbling upon Chimera OS. Now Chimera OS, I'm sitting here thinking, cool name, sweet logo, and its own website does state that, hey, this works with NVIDIA graphics cards. And I'm like, that sounds way better than what was going on with Halo ISO. So I decided to go download Chimera, installs the same exact way like I did with Halo ISO onto the flash drive. And this time we made some real progress. Not only did I just plug it in, same flash drive, boot it into the PC itself, but it actually started installing. I am now excited. I'm like, oh my God, after four hours of just trying to install an operating system, we're finally making some level of progress. And the installation on Chimera OS was actually super straightforward and incredibly easy. Popped up on the PC. It even asked for connectivity to my network. I connected it to the Wi-Fi without any issue whatsoever so it can run updates. Right after that, we saw the Steam OS logo and I'm like, like, hallelujah. From here on, what I'm going to be doing is just taking it right from this area and bringing it upstairs into my living room that we see over here and plugging it into that TV that we have behind me. And to emulate that whole console experience, the only input device that I'll be using here is going to be a PlayStation 4 controller that I plugged right into one of the USB ports. Now the setup was very easy and straightforward. I just simply logged into my Steam account, uh, told it to download a bunch of games, and thought it was good to go. Now, what I had planned on doing was running the same games that I did on my previous video, which included games like Apex Legends, the Resident Evil 4 Chainsaw demo, Halo Infinite, and the Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Now, the big surprise is that I actually ended up running into completely different issues in essentially every single game that I ran, which is surprising. I tried to run Counter-Strike Global Offensive, and you're going to notice immediately that the screen is covered in a disgusting amount of artifacts. There's just all these weird pixelated images. And if I pause the game and go to the main menu, those artifacts just go away. But the moment I try to go into the game itself, it would just cover the screen in them. So I'm just like, okay, there's something weird going on there. Now I know this GPU is working. We tested it in the previous video, never had an overheat problem. Apex Legends, when I tried launching this, actually got stuck in the Vulcan shader screen for multiple hours because I just thought, let it run and see what happens. Eventually, what I managed to do was just kind of skip it and then just go into the game. And from what you could see over here, the game actually ran. Uh, I managed to go into the training and it ran very, very poorly. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of skipping that's happening here. It is unplayable of an experience that's going on. It's a lot of stuttering from any kind of movement. Even the inputs are very delayed. Every time I would try to jump or slide or anything, it's delayed by like half a second. It's just unacceptable amounts of lag. And Elden Ring, I couldn't find any footage of me actually having all the artifacts, so I'll see if I could put one up on screen with just a photo that I had over there, uh, would give me artifacts, but eventually, I just kept rebooting the game until it eventually launched, and this is where it got interesting. Not only did the game actually launch, it started running, and we could see that I'm just running around, got a couple of kills over here just to see what would happen, and then the game started slowing down a lot. The game started slowing to such a crawl that it gave me an error that I have never seen before. It gave me an error that it ran so badly that it was going to bring me back over to the main menu. And I couldn't even get out of this anymore and I had to restart the computer. And lastly, the Resident Evil 4 demo, uh, I was legitimately surprised. It opened and it ran. It is the only game that just didn't really give me any super issues. But as we could see over here, the performance is, again, really choppy, which uh, now I'm a little bit disappointed as I'm not even able to get a single one of the games that I tried to run over here to even function properly whatsoever. Now, when checking the hardware info in Steam OS, it is correctly detecting my hardware and identifying them except for my RAM. I realize it's only seeing eight gigs of my RAM. So it's only seeing one of the two six sets in there. Uh, when I check the BIOS, obviously we have a little snippet over there, the footage, it is detecting the two sticks on the motherboard just fine, but the Windows 10 installation detected and utilized it just fine. But SteamOS, for whatever reason, is only reading one of those sticks, no matter what I've tried on that. I've even tried flipping these sticks around over to other slots 
same problem. It just does not seem to want to read anything above eight gigs of RAM, which could also lead to a lot of performance issues, especially if we're talking about an AMD processor being used in there. All right, since I saw all these nodes and posts on websites that like, like Halo ISO is an example that said that it doesn't want to work with the NVIDIA GPU, I thought, well, how about just running it on an AMD GPU instead? Uh, and I do know that the Steam Deck itself runs on what is essentially an AMD APU. So most likely, I'm just thinking that at this point, the Steam OS just requires an AMD system in order to function properly. So I swapped the 1660 Super that I have with an AMD 5700 XT that I just happen to have on hand. And I figured that it's not a bad comparison. I'm not going to do any benchmarks at this point because now we're swapping out the hardware entirely and I could barely even get games to run so I'm not even going to show you frame A versus frame B at this point because now we're also swapping hardware but at this point I'm just wanting to see if I can just get games running at all. Now my initial reaction once I popped in at 5700 XT and fired up the Steam Deck OS, holy crap! The menu is now incredibly responsive. Uh, you may not have noticed it from the footage, but like I was mentioning beforehand, there was some weird input delay that was going on every time I was trying to do anything on the menu. And I could even see that the menu itself was running at like 10 to 15 frames per second. But now with the AMD GPU in there, it's running just fine. And I'm like, okay, fantastic. This is good. I'm not going to hold my breath. And I did also double check the settings to see what the SteamOS detects. And it does detect that there's a 5700 XT in here. So I'm like, all right, let's try and play some games. I threw on Apex Legends. And the massive stuttering issue that I was having with the 1660 Super just melted away entirely. I am now having what is essentially a playable experience with Apex Legends. I went into the training mode, ran around, shot some guns. I'm like, this is fantastic. I even decided to just play an actual game of the Battle Royale and I finished it losing, but I still finished it. And I'm like, yeah, this was a completely fine experience. Jumped over to Counter-Strike Global Offensive. The artifacts are now completely gone, even running at 1080p. However, I'm still running into this issue where for some reason, Counter-Strike Go is not detecting that I have a controller plugged in which is weird considering if we notice the steam os itself it's detecting that i'm using a playstation 4 controller i can even navigate the menu of counter-strike go using the ps4 controller i try to plug it into different usb ports and everything it just would not detect or turn on controller compatibility not until i unplugged the controller entirely and switched it over to a playstation 5 controller that i have and lo and behold the moment that i plugged in a ps5 controller it just detected that there's now a ps5 controller in there and worked with that controller instead so that's already another issue that i don't even want to think about at this point but from there played a game against bots using the ps5 controller on counter-strike go completely playable experience ran just fine and that's kind of where all the positives now end, as I tried to run my next three games. Elden Ring just wouldn't launch at all. Uh, I couldn't get past the loading screen. Once it ran the anti-cheat software, it just got stuck. And I just it didn't matter if I like reinstalled the game. It didn't matter if I just rebooted a computer or anything like that. Elden Ring just didn't launch anymore. So now we have somehow gotten something worse than when we were running it in the 1660 Super where it, it ran bad. This now just doesn't run. So from there, I tried running the Resident Evil 4 Chainsaw demo, which would also just crash whenever I tried to load the game. And that didn't work out for me either and then i decided oh, let me just do it for grins and giggles i decided to try and run halo infinite and i couldn't even log in um yeah i would get stuck on the login screen it has the button there to press the login and usually what would come up is like a microsoft login screen where i could type in my email and password and that would log me into the game so i could actually start playing in a multiplayer it wouldn't get past that screen i could hear it clicking as it's acknowledging that i'm pressing something but i get nothing from that point at this point, I kind of just completely gave up. <laughs> And honestly, it could just totally be me. It could have just been me making a hundred different mistakes that led me to this point that just led the Steam OS installation, specifically with Chimera OS, to just be an unplayable experience. With that, I kind of just threw my hands up in the air and I turned to you guys out there. Have you managed to install Steam OS properly on a desktop PC of some sort or like one of those micro PCs? Let me know. I want to know what you used that was out there, what hardware that you used, and then see if I can try it and maybe give it another go in a month or two because honestly I don't want to have to try this again because that was 
That was a rough experience, and it was starting to like test my patience for sure. So what do you folks think? Did I just bomb and flop my way throughout this entire experience? Uh, was there something I could have ran instead, in your opinion? Let me know in the comments below, and make sure, to, again, to like and subscribe. Leave a comment, and I'm nearing in that 1,000 subscriber mark, which is actually going to help the channel a lot once I eventually get there. So if you haven't, please do that. It's going to help me out a lot. And until next time, this is Leo from TechLion PCs signing out.